in reality, uh, this topic is really simple. There is going to be zero rocket science. Actually, this is mostly about how you can gather a couple of really simple concepts into something that is already working and bringing you uh, presumably a lot of value on, or really just covers uh, the problems that you have or you want to cover. Uh, I was thinking about the topic and how to make it short, but in reality, the actual topic would be the automated build versioning with GitHub Actions, semantic versioning, and conventional commits. So I think that uh, anyways, uh, we're going to get into that right now. So in reality, today, we're going to look at the semantic versioning and what it is. I presume that most of you are already aware of what it is. Maybe most of you also used that when versioning your uh, public uh, API applications, or maybe uh, most of your applications. Uh, we'll look at what conventional commits are at which problems uh, they solve as a specification. Uh, again, hopefully, most of you are already using that. And also look at GitHub Actions as a way to quickly and absolutely for free uh, do something that is going to possibly cover all of your needs for at least some time and maybe for a long period of time uh, with your CI slash CD processes. Uh, and also, yeah, there is going to be a small repository that I've prepared. There is, again, going to be a very simple API application in Python uh, that we are going to mostly disregard in favor of the actual GitHub actions uh, in the repository. So a little disclaimer is that uh, as a platform in this, uh, we're going to be using GitHub and GitHub Actions. But again, every other platform has its own GitHub Actions. Azure has pipelines. GitLab has CI slash CD, if I remember it correctly. The idea is absolutely the same across all of them. It's all about the, the sort of uh, workflows uh, that are tightly connected to the CI of your specific project in your platform. Uh, so you can basically uh, implement that in whatever you want. You are going to miss, or maybe you're going to have more instruments in your platform, because here we are going to uh, use some of the uh, already ready and created steps for the workflows. So if we look at the general problem that we would want to cover with all of these items, uh, be it the start of a project, be it a point in the project where you would just like to tidy things up and uh, implement something really easy, something really quick, and something that is going to work and possibly be uh, sustainable enough to actually stay with you and your processes for a long time. For us, uh, that actually happened, uh, and we are using all of these in a slightly fine-tuned way, but still the general idea is, is exactly the same as we're going to see. So the first item would be to have a specification for how we actually version the applications, actually uh, taking into account which changes are we introducing into the application. Uh, that is going to be covered, uh, well, all of these are going to be covered uh, con cons consecutively uh, by the items that we're going to introduce, but in general, uh, that would be the first item. The second would be a consistent way of writing and structuring commit messages. So first of all, to have them all in a specific structure uh, so that they are deductible, so they are consistent, and they are just just cool to read. That, that, that is the last uh, item. Uh, the next one in the same scope would be to actually able uh, to imply the next version based on that commit history, because that is what conventional commits uh, going a little bit forward already uh, allows us. Uh, that is to derive the state of the application and derive the actual version uh, and derive what was what was happening to the application based on the input uh, or that, that the developers agreed on they are providing with the commits. And the last step with all of that would actually be to uh, cover some of these uh, items, would be to create pre or actual releases that are tagged with that derived version, uh, to apply that version directly to Docker images that would be built in your uh, GitHub action and actually be then uh, pushed into the registry. So then after that, you can 
uh, do whatever you want with them. You can then use them in your infrastructure. You can then directly pull them, work with them, and they are all tagged and uh, they're tagged with the versions that are then connected to the specific revision and release and tag in your repository automatically. The other item that you can do with that is to actually generate change logs for all of your pre and releases. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I was too lazy to actually prepare an example of that, uh, but I'll describe the idea of how it can be done. And uh, it's again, the same easy concept. And yeah, you can you can basically expand and extend on that in whatever way possible, where, wherever your imagination takes you, because that because all of these concepts, they are really flexible, even though they are specifications, they're really flexible. The GitHub actions is really flexible. It's straightforward. It's easy to use and you can do you can do a lot of stuff with that. So to quickly go through what the semantic version is, it is, again, a specification for uh, defining versions of an application and that is that it is uh, important that these applications are public APIs that is what the semantic versioning uh, that is the, pro the problem that semantic versioning is actually covering is uh, to have that uh, dependency hell uh, be it in your project or as your application being a dependency of other projects uh, to resolve that so to actually to actually have it structured and to actually have that consistent and derivable uh, and as per documentation again that is, that is a really easy concept there there is three things uh, to the uh, that semantic version that is the major minor and patch uh, parts of the version uh, the major would actually increase with with any incompatible changes that you introduce to the api so for example dropping uh, some endpoint changing the schema of some endpoints so basically anything that would disable some users from uh, actually carrying out in uh, in their normal way using your application or your uh, your library whatever that is uh, the minor patch would be adding functionality that it does not break any previous uh, functionality and the patch the last one would be to just make uh, some fixes or small refactoring uh, basically small implementations there is also uh, in the in the specification uh, uh, the ability to add pre-releases as post fixes to that version to have build metadata in that version uh, still that being the uh, semantic version the most basic example of that would be say we are already in the version 1.0.0 and that is uh, that is when you are already in a public version because uh, there is a point in the documentation actually, actually the documentation itself uh, it is it is here semver.org uh, it is in the in the presentation here are all, all of the specifications with all of the uh, small caveats and all descriptions, uh, for example, that, uh, again, that it has to declare a public API, uh, the order of precedence, uh, and again, uh, yeah, it's all there. The main idea is that when you are in version 1.0.0, you're already public, so all of the changes that you make, you take responsibility for them, and users expect you actually to take that responsibility and to provide them with the applications that are going to work accordingly to that version. So, for example, if you, uh, if you actually deploy a new version that is, that is just uh, an increment in the minor or patch versions, all of the users are going to expect that nothing bad is going to happen to all of the existing functionality because otherwise that these are going to be uh, actually bugs that you are introducing to, to the to the application because if that is a breaking change it should be described but that does not apply when you still in the 0.0.x uh, version or 0.x.x when the major version is zero because technically you are not yet public when you are the when you are publishing an application with that version so basically all of the restrictions are lifted uh you still should uh for your own good uh follow all of these uh all of all of, all of the ideas of semantic versioning and when you should version and when you should increment but in general uh you are sort of in a carte blanche uh state with that so the easiest again uh example of that would be into the initial version we would introduce some backward compatible bug fix basically fixing some functionality, making something work. 
uh, or just refactoring something, uh, changing something in the uh, not code related. Uh, actually, you can even exclude that code from the semantic versioning, but we tend to uh, have all of the code in our you know in, in in the application and then version that in the new in the new revision again some new functionality some new endpoint some uh new thing that does not change how other things work in a major way and uh, that all of the other results are expectable and consistent uh, that is going to introduce the new minor version. Again, another version uh, with the bug fix is going to increment the minor version and an incompatible change, changing the schema, dropping uh, endpoints is going to uh, move you into the, uh, into the new major version. That is that simple. Uh, sure, all of you are already uh, aware of that, just to recap. So that actually already covers the first step, which is sort of vaguely uh, stated, but it it actually covers this this problem. So we so we already have that. If we always keep that in mind, we are already going to have a more consistent application and a more consistent strategy of how we uh, not only provide our users if we already have users with our uh, libraries or with our application, but also how we treat our application because we now care about that and we care about which specific functionality goes where, and it, it builds uh, responsibility for what you're doing. Uh, and responsibility in your own field is, is just as uh, important as when you are uh, responsible in front of someone. Conventional commits. Uh, this is a topic that actually really synergizes with the semantic question because it actually describes, it lets you describe in a very structured way the changes that you are doing to the application with each commit and uh, then the semantic versioning or any sort of automation that you do on top of that can actually derive what are the changes and what's going on with the application uh, that enables automation uh, that enables reviewing that, ena that enables generating uh, change walks new versions whatever whatever your trigger is whatever the action is you can basically uh, do whatever you want with that with any with any can commit of type docs trigger a rebuild of your documents uh, of, of your doc repository something something like that of your doc uh, docs uh, pod in the cluster your docs uh, machine in, 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 in your cloud, whatever, whatever it is, you can connect that to something that is, that, that is going to execute that. Uh, the structure of a commit with conventional commits would be the next, you would have the uh, actually required type. Uh, there are two basic types, the, these are fix or fit, uh, feed actually, uh, and many others are described as possible and as used by other uh, by other companies in this uh, this documentation. So, for example, there could be there's the allowed the other allowed types are build, chore, CI doc style, whatever you want, whatever fits your process. You can use that and then tune your uh, tools to that. And then and because that is a convention, uh, it's not like in the Limp Bizkit song, uh, my way or the highway. It's more about your way, which fits you. Uh, there's going to be a description after that type, uh, which actually describes what, what is going on in the comment. This, that is going to be your uh, default commit message, then optional body, optional footer, basically the uh, regular stuff that you would see. Uh, but there is a detail about that. Uh, any fix, any type fix would actually correspond to fixing a bug or uh, fixing any small piece of functionality in your uh, code base. And that actually corresponds with the patch in semantic version. So we already have the first step of that. The second is the fit. And the fit is actually that you're introducing, introducing the new functionality. That corresponds to the minor version uh, bump in the semantic version. And then there are many ways that you can actually implement the breaking change uh, in general, we are using, uh, for example, in our project, we use breaking change. You can, uh, again, according to the documentation, you can use breaking change or the exclamation mark. Uh, you can come up with your own 
uh, again, this is a convention and it is probably good to stick to that because that was created by someone and already tested them. But again, you can, you, can, you can go your own way if that suits you. If you, you, you can have multiple versions, you can have a, a major on top of a major and then have your own conventional structure on that. If that suits you, if you, if you think that you need that, I think you should, you should go for that. Uh, some of the examples of the commits would be uh, like the following. So example, uh, that would be a commit that you actually provide, uh, allow provided config budget to extend other configs. Whatever that is, uh, you are in the context of that. You know that this is a new feature. Uh, users are, know that that is a new feature in context of that in the commit history. And also that there is a breaking change with that feature. So that actually overrides the feature that is going to be a major bump if that is merged into the uh, code and, and may, it makes a new version. Uh, another one would be a combination of a refactor type with the uh, exclamation mark. So that alone already drops some of the functionality. So that is a breaking change. So that requires a major update. But also there is another the breaking change that is also described here. So you, you can technically uh, drop that, but again, for more uh, visibility. And also a commit message with the optional scope. We in our project don't use scopes. We use the description for that. You can use scopes, but I think that it, it, it makes it a little bit harder to then derive the uh, version when you're using the versioning, but again, uh, it depends on how you actually derive that and what is your solution. Uh, this is going to be a new feature that is going to increase minor version. And we actually add Polish language for all of our uh, Polish users. Uh, rejoice. So that actually covers the next two uh, items that we've discussed. We now have a consistent way of writing and structuring commit messages, which is great in itself. We now are more responsible with how we write commits. If that, that may already be uh, a staple in your project, you may have already uh, covered that and agreed on that and you have a convention. If you have that, you can use that convention that you have and implement uh, something on top of that. So you can use that already. Uh, it's all about how you combine the things that you have in your project. Uh, and we are also now able to imply the next version of the app from commit history, because right now every commit is actually going to tell us what are the changes that we are introducing to the code base. We can now look at the commit history and see what's going on and what is the next version, but because that is what we in this scope are most interested in. So uh, how we could combine that then uh, there is this GitHub Actions, which is, again, as I've mentioned, the same as Azure Pipelines, GitLab, CI, CD, some other, I, I think Bitbucket now has its own stuff or, or something, I don't know. Uh, again, that is a feature that where you can create workflows, which would perform some CI, CD related actions. Uh, you can run them manually, automatically, on specific conditions. You, there, there is like... 50 conditions on which you can run them on pull requests, on pushes to specific branches, to tags, on opening issues, on commenting to pull requests, whatever, whatever, whatever. They, there is everything. They are free for public repositories. You can actually use them for free. They're, they're, as far as I am concerned, there is no limitations. You get unlimited uh, minutes for public repositories. Uh, so that is to encourage uh, open source uh, uh, development. And also for private ones, you actually get 2,000 free minutes. I think that is one time and that is non-replenishable. Uh, with Pro, you, you kind of get 3,000 or something, but anyways. Uh, there are multiple steps for these actions. So these actions are actually like Lego. You, 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 just, you just pick your blocks and what they do. And in uh, this or in which or in which order you can pick blocks that you've created yourself. You can create your own action and just uh, push it into a repository. If that uh, suffice, suffices the format of a GitHub action, you can use that as a GitHub action in a GitHub action, as a GitHub step uh, in a GitHub action. And uh, you can use the ones that are already provided by GitHub, by Docker, by whatever, by, I think SonarCube has its own. I think you, you, you there, there's something from Azure to link with Azure. There's everything. And you can also run whatever you need there. Linting, testing, integration testing, unit testing uh, on different machines. 
uh, creating, uh, building uh, documentation, building, deploying, whatever, pushing, pushing, pushing uh, builds, pushing Docker images, creating Docker images, tag, tagging them. Uh, basically, th these are very uh, easy uh, items that I've named, but they're, they're, you, you can combine them into whatever you want. You can, you can then scan your Docker images for vulnerabilities. You can add all sorts of stuff. And that is just for the uh, this is just for the CI/CD. So the general idea of a GitHub action uh, is really simple. That is what the probably the most simple real-world application would look like for a uh, for a GitHub action. You would have the name of the action itself. You would have the conditions on which it actually runs. Uh, so, for example, this would run on every pull request to the main branch and also for every uh, action that updates this pull request. So every commit that is pushed to that pull request is going to rerun these checks. And then there is the section where it describes the chops th themselves, sort of the high level ones that are going to perform multiple steps. Uh, the first one and the only one is the quality check. Uh, it runs on Ubuntu latest. You can uh, pick macOS or Windows, or you can create a matrix. There is, there is this, uh, function in the in the github action this feature to actually run it in six in concurrently actually uh, on multiple platforms or with multiple options there's there's a lot of stuff we set the optional timeout uh, and then the steps the first step this 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 is actually li literally what is going to happen in in the workflow the first one is is going to check out uh, by default to this same repository where it is uh, uh, where it is called from it, it is going to we are going to use the actions setup node which is going to set up the latest node uh, uh, version and all of the uh, tools for node uh, then we can uh, safely install the dependencies after the setup is done that is that is the first step that is the second the, the third is to install dependencies and run npm install the fourth is to run npm run test if there is going to be an exit with code one uh, on the tests, your application, uh, your action is going to fail. You would know that. You would see that in the pull request. You can then uh, you can then have these checks on the pull request and uh, have a specific number of these checks to be required uh, to actually be able to merge a pull request. So that is that is very neat and that is already built in into GitHub Action. You can use that in your project, in your own one, or wherever. So what would we need our action to do right now? We would need it to actually first to check out to the commit that this action is running against. We already know that this is done by the checkout action. Then we would need to calculate somehow the new version of our app uh, based on the commit history. Uh, we're going to look at how we are going to do that. Uh, what we would like to do is to create a GitHub pre-release so that there is a tag for that. We, we, we can either have just a tag, we go with pre-releases so that it is more visible in the releases uh, tab. Uh, it, is, uh, it is more explicit and you can uh, reference them by that. But again, it's just ba basically just creating a tag for a pre-release uh, would be enough. Then we would build a Docker image for our application. So for example, if our application is built in Docker, then we use that Docker image in our infrastructure uh, we use different images from different registries on uh, our infrastructure. We can then reference that uh, image that is going to be created by this uh, action automatically with the version that is going to be created automatically based on how, based on just our input in the comment messages. We would then tag this Docker image and then push it to the registry. That is the most basic scenario probably that you can cover with that. There is multiple other stuff that you can add but to keep it simple probably uh that's uh that's all we were going to look at today and that actually covers the last items that we have is to automate all of the stuff that we had so we are going to actually have multiple things in a very uh, little time and with very li little effort spent we are going to have a specification for how we version our applications we are now going to strictly know and uh, our users will know because that is the public specification and uh, again as you agree on that we will know how we version our application how it versions and which changes uh, go into that i am hoping that most of you already have that covered and you don't need to fix that but uh, that is also a quick way on how to start a new project and already have that in place
the second one is to be uh, able to write structured and pretty commit messages and also to be able to derive uh, the stuff that you can automate from them and then to automate it. So there is this repository that I probably can uh, share. It is, it is public, so you can technically just go, go there and uh, click whatever you want. But in reality, uh, I'll just probably try to showcase the main parts of that. Uh, you can uh, you can see that right now we have just a simple uh, down to ground uh, pi project specification. There is just this small pi project tomo for the point tree. Yeah, uh, yep, it is now in the chat. You can look at that. Uh, there, there is this. We, we are we are only going to have three dependencies. It it really doesn't uh, matter in scope of this one. I'm hoping you, that you already use poetry as your uh, project uh, builder. Uh, that is, that's probably because because I personally am already used to that. Uh, there is going to be an application that is very simple. There is just this main file where we uh, describe the application. We include one one router. There, there is really nothing to that. There are two routes, but the the main thing that we are going to look at is the actual GitHub workflows. So the main one is the CI action. Uh, here we can see that this action actually again runs on every push to the main branch. So whenever there is going to be a push from a pull request, uh, a direct push, which I uh, discourage and should be discouraged. Uh, and generally, whatever happens to the main branch is going to be reflected here. We are going to have two environment variables that we can then reference in our uh, action. These are going to be the Docker username, which is public, and also the repository for the Docker hub, which is also public, uh, that we're going to use. Then our Docker job, what would it do? And first of all, it would run on Ubuntu with timeout of 15 minutes. Next one, we are going to need to check out to our application, uh, to, to our repository. Uh, there's this one uh, detail that with the new version, you should always look at the version of the actions that you are using. They're changing really quick and very rapidly and uh, most, of, most of the time uh, very drastically. Uh, there is this with, with the new version. We actually we actually used the version one of the checkout, and it made a actual checkout with all of the commit history and all the tags. Version two actually does a shallow checkout to this specific revision. Uh, thank you, Tina, and have a great day. Uh, it's okay to drop if you need to. Uh, so yeah, so you actually need to provide a. Uh, a fetch depth of zero so that it actually gets all of the commits and all of the tags uh, for you because otherwise there's going to be a shallow checkout. Uh, next, we're going to use the semantic version in action that is already created by Paul Hatch. It is open source and it is very easy to use. We in our project at some point forked from that when it was only version two. It is now version four and covered most of the things that we've tried to cover with our fork. So I'll probably recommend using that. Uh, it is actually really simple. You can again, just Google that. Uh, you would get into the uh, repository itself. Uh, it is it is the same action. So whenever it is a action and, and GitHub actually uh, parses that as an action. And that is, I think, when you have the uh, action YAML file, uh, that is going to actually convert that and make it, uh, you would be prompt, I, I, I suppose prompted if you want to publish that in the marketplace so you can actually create your own and then it's uh, going to be either public or you can just reference that in your actions. So there is the background for that, where he explains the semantic version in how it actually works here. Uh, the uh, specific uh, variables that you can provide and uh, the patterns, we are going to look at that. And you can also look at that as well, uh, just by actually Googling that specific uh, action, but uh, I'll probably share that here. Again, as you can see, this is none, not, none of these uh, items are Python specific. 
it's it's it just so ha so happened to be that uh, this application that we are going to build is in Python. It can be in anything. We've actually introduced this exact approach in the front end uh, application that we had. This is the same idea. It's very generic. Uh, so for this specific, uh, semantic versioning, we are going to provide that it should look at the main branch. Uh, so so that that is going to actually uh, compare all of the commits on the main branch. The tag prefix that you that you have that that you would like for the for the, for the version is going to be v. Uh, that is a there is one detail on which is semantic version and which is not. Semantic version is everything that is that starts with uh that actually starts with zero with the actually starts with the with the major version if you have a v there there's also i think a an explanation for that somewhere around here probably couldn't find it mm. but yeah anyways if you have a tag that is uh called v 1.0.0 that is no longer a semantic version that is a tag that you are using that is built uh using this semantic version that is uh that is uh created by you manually or automatically anyways we describe the major and minor patterns for which it actually going to look for when uh, scanning the uh commit history the idea you can you can look at the uh at the source code, it's very simple. It's just JavaScript, plain JavaScript code, very easy to read. It's just it just goes through the commit history and actually uh, from the last tag that you have counts all of the other uh, includences of minor and my and major patterns and then derives the uh, new version. For the major pattern, we're going to use the breaking change, and for the minor pattern, we're going to use the feet. Uh, all of the other commits uh, have do if no no matter if they have the type uh, whatever type they have they are going to have uh, the they're going to in increment the uh, patch version that is the approach that we actually use on our projects as well and also the output format for that uh, for each specific increment would be the v major dot minor dot patch and then the pre-release for each increment because that is the that is the thing each commit is going to be tagged with something and we are not we, we do not specifically want maybe to have each of those as a actual release so until you actually cre create a release manually with the actual semantic version that is a link for creating which is going to be provided by this specific action uh, it is only going to be creating the increments uh, however, you can just use the uh, other output. So, so the actions actually have outputs. So it, here, for example, we actually are using uh, in this sort of way, referencing the internal uh, variables in the action from the steps with the ID versioning. Uh, we are accessing its outputs, which is the version. There is another output. And however, you actually create your own, if you create your own uh, step, you can just have the output as the new actual version without the increment and just create releases out of that for each uh, uh, merge into into main uh, the choice is yours you can do whatever you want with that so again in the outputs of this step we would have the version we can then use this version when we are building our image the next action is to actually the next step is to log in into docker into Docker Hub actually, and you can pass uh, uh, your uh, registry, you can pass your actual uh, Docker registry, whether, wherever it is hosted, be it Azure or AWS or just Docker Hub like here, you just provide the username and the other detail, you provide the secret and you provide the secret for the Docker password. Uh, that is actually done. I think you are all aware that there is in GitHub the secrets page uh in the repository where you can actually store secrets for your repository so you basically create a token uh for accessing your registry and just add it here and then in your github actions you can reference that uh in a safe way so that is what we are referencing here as a password so after that action we are going to actually be locked into the uh, docker hub and then we're going to use another uh, docker step which is build push action 
uh, with the uh, attributes of push is true. So you can opt to not push and just have the built images in your action for whatever uh, you want, because you would you you technically would like to first build the image and then, for example, run some testing on the image or run a scan of the image. Uh, for example, with Trivi, with uh, which actually uh, runs scans on vulnerabilities for Docker images. Uh, and then we would like to have these tags, uh, which are CSV comma separated, uh, which are going to be our repository latest and our repository with the uh, with the actual version that is uh, produced by the by the semantic version action and the repository is again the uh, username and the actual repo uh, that is going to build and push it for us otherwise we would just need to again uh, use the push action or just to run a cmd right here with the run instead of instead of uses and in that run you would just uh, access your uh, docker uh, docker executable and push it yourself you can do whatever you want here and then the next step the last step would be to create the release that is going to be a pre-release that is again an action from github actions uh, this step uh, we are going to run that on every action where well actually that is not necessary because that only runs on pushes to main branch uh, but again, you can specify uh, if you want actions not to run under specific conditions. So, for example, if you would, uh, have this to run when there are some changes to the tags, uh, you could omit uh, a tag action, by, uh, a, an action based on the trigger of a tag with that, with if, and then seeing if the GitHub ref uh, is actually starts with tags. So if, if, if you have checked out it to a tag in this action. Uh, and with that, we have to provide the GitHub token so it actually connects to the uh, actual uh, repo in GitHub. And for that, there is the GitHub token that is stored natively in the secrets. Uh, GitHub Actions does that for us, so we can access that. And we do this pre-release with the tag name and the release name as the output of the version that we have from the semantic version. And that is it. it I think that it could have been a little bit uh, all in one place and too much, but let's look at how it actually works. So right now, any change that we are going to introduce to the main branch is going to trigger some action. Right now, we already have some release, I think. Yeah, so that is that is the that is when I tested that. So uh, as I added the action, the actual release was also already created. It is also in the uh, Docker Hub right now, but really. Let's look at if we want to do some change. Uh, for example, in the routers, we can do it right here. And for example, at another router, uh, for example, that is nonsense. Uh, I'm just adding some new code so that uh, so that we can then build uh, the application. So with that, uh, we can then in the commit message, uh, actually, actually we can, yeah, to probably simulate real world behavior, we are going to create a pull request, I think. And in here, uh, we are going to specify that this is a feature, a fit. Nice, I haven't heard of that. And yeah, the, the description can be either omitted or you can add the description. So again, anyways, uh, I would propose these changes as myself.
if we had any actions that would run on pull requests, we would actually have them here. And if we enabled our branch protection strategy to require some actions to, uh, to actually, we, we would require them to succeed, we would not be able to merge this pull request until they've all succeeded. And there they could be linting, testing or whatever. So we would just merge that into the main branch. We can see that we now have a new commit that actually has the feature. We can then go to actions and see that it actually triggered a new action. And in this action, there is a job called Docker. We can look at that. And that actually is performing all of the steps that, we, that we've supplied to that. It logged into the Docker Hub. It created a semantic version. Uh, so that is going to be a new feature. It naturally increased the version, uh, actually the minor version, because currently the last one is, uh, let me see, 001 pre release two. The next version is going to be 0 0.1. Absolutely, because that is a new feature. There isn't, there haven't been a feature yet in the in the code base. It also creates a link if you were to create your release right away, uh, which is really easy. And you would just go there and create your manual release. But to that, we will come back later. So waiting for the build and push action to finish. It actually has finished. It created a new release. It created a new image. Uh, with the new tag, uh, I think, yep, here's the, yeah. Well, I hope it did, but we'll see it in a moment. Uh, first thing that we would need to check is to see that there is a new release now. And yep, indeed, there is now a new release and a new tag. With a to a specific revision, so that that is already covered in our repository, and also this specific tag and this uh, Docker image that is uh, built for that is in the Docker Hub. If we right now refresh the page, we should see, yep, that there is the new tag that is already in the Docker Hub. So that is already pushed. That is that is already in your registry. You can already use that. You already have this version 0 0.1.0. It is also the latest. Uh, you can use that. So you have a release, you have a tag, and you also have a tagged Docker image that is already in your registry. You can use that in your infrastructure right away. Uh, so what would actually happen if you were to create a release out of that, an actual release and not a pre-release? You would probably want that, for example, with the actual tag that you've created again. And as we know that uh, this action only runs for uh, pushes to the main branch, and that is not, not going to be a push to main branch. You would just create a tag uh, with a release. Uh, that is... And you, you, you might also want to push that to some other uh, repos, to some other registry, uh, whatever that is. Uh, for that, for, for simplicity, I've created another action which actually covers that. Uh, in the real world, you would probably just extend this action and have some uh, conditions on the steps. And uh, when creating the version uh, or creating the release, uh, you would look at the actual tag version and create the release uh, right away and then tag the Docker image with the actual release tag and not the pre-release tag and actually push that to a uh, repository uh, or uh, registry of your desire. Uh, in the release, it is much of the same, but here we actually run this action on each push of a new tag, which is actually what happens when you create a release uh, with the specific format, with the V and then uh, any other symbols. Uh, we, we can elaborate that more to just have it in the specific semantic version format, but that uh, just for ease uh, of implementation. So that all of the other tags that you just push for your convenience are not going to create a release or uh, push a image uh, to any repository. And here we just do more of the same. Again, we check out, uh, not sure if we need all of this because we are not using the semantic version. So yeah, you can drop that. Uh, we set 
to the environment variables the version from the actual GitHub reference uh, because we don't need the semantic version and we know which version we are going to deploy. Uh, so we just have that and uh, remove by with, with this specific syntax, we remove the first two uh, the first two items in the string of refs slash tags slash actual tag. We get the actual tag and set it to version that we appended to the actual GitHub env environment variable, which is the uh, environment variable which is used when you are referencing env in this syntax in the templating in the uh, GitHub action. Uh, so you can then reference it there how, as we do it here with the end version. So again, we will just log into uh, Docker Hub, maybe to some other username with, with other password. You can do that here. I'm just doing it to the same uh, uh, Docker Hub and just building and pushing again uh, this uh, latest revision with the repository and the version uh, that, is, that, that, that we've set. So if we right now create a release and we can actually go to the latest action, look at the, uh, at the semantic version step, use that, uh, use that URL. It's kind of redundant, but anyways, and we can, and we create an actual, uh, actual release with the, with the version 0.1.0, which we actually signify as this is going to ship somewhere to some uh, either marketplace or to your internal library uh, packaging system, wherever you, you would use that specific version on production in your infrastructure among your other services, whatever that be, uh, you would publish that. And you would actually have a new action triggered, which is the uh, the last one that we've seen. It is tri triggered for this specific tag, and it is actually going to uh, push this image tag with the actual version that we need. That uh, is, let's imagine, is going to be pushed to the production registry in uh, in either Docker Hub or uh, somewhere where you store your Docker images. Uh, when we have that, that is going to be that is going to be covered in a couple of seconds. In reality, what th there are much more things uh, that you can do with that. Even though uh, you can extend that functionality to generate uh, to generate change logs. So then, when creating a release, you would actually you can supply into the create release action of the GitHub actions, another variable would, which would be the content of the description of the release. And he, there you could previously compile the change log. Uh, you can either extend an existing semantic version in application or create your own and then have it as an output and then uh, place it strict, uh, straight into the create release action. Uh, so in reality, we see that our action succeeded. And we should see in our Docker Hub a new version, a new a new Docker image tag with this version. And indeed, we now have a version that is now we know and we've specified is ready for use wherever we want that in production or wherever. Really, that's mostly it. And there is again many things that you can expand. Uh, uh, based on that. Again, as, as we've already described, you can either generate change logs for these releases. You can generate change logs for the actual releases. You can automate the manual release strategy. We personally, on, in our project, use that manually because that is a good uh, sort of this green light step uh, where we can align with clients and with ourselves uh, on what specific uh, things we ship and, pro and actually provide. Uh, again, some uh, different Docker registries you can you can push to wherever you want. Uh, you can fine tune the sem semantic version format or create your own action with your own logic. Uh, basically, you can do whatever you want with that. The idea is very simple. It is all building blocks, and the best thing is that you can create your own building blocks again. Uh, when this semantic version action was in version two, we actually forked 
from that and extended that. Uh, and we have our own format for uh, pre-releases and we have our own logic, whether we want them or not. So you can, you can do whatever you want. And I hope it was interesting, at least. I probably uh, don't expect that to be that helpful to everyone. I wish it was, and I wish it was, I, I wish some of you will try that either in your personal projects or in your actual projects uh, in your work. Uh, anyways, I hope you had fun. And I think that is the end for my side.